It's Friday. I'm meeting Matt Baker today. Here he comes. There's a there's a black gate and then there's another black gate. <laughs> Here we are. You knew you were in the wrong place when you started seeing fancy cars, right? When you see the uh, six digit cars, there's something. <laughs> Welcome everyone to a special edition of Flyover Footy. This is our flyover focus on Nico Joachini. St. Louis City SC's first pick in the expansion draft last year and one of the two competing strikers for our team this year with our designated player, Jacques Klaus. So I'm here. My name is Matt Baker. I'm with Phil Grooms. Hey, Phil, how's it, how's it going? Good, Matt. Uh, good to be here. Feels kind of weird doing this flip side where uh, I'm, I'm bringing us in, but um, I think it's, uh, it, it's exciting for me. I was able to interview Nico Giochini the other day. And I'm excited that we're get we're getting to bring this to everybody. I think it is it's an opportunity I've been waiting for for a while to interview a player, find out more about them, bring their kind of history and why we should care about them in St. Louis to all the St. Louis fans. And um, you were kind of the guy who facilitated that. And for that, I am ever indebted to you. Well, we're indebted to the club because they offered to let us come to the training. We weren't sure how long this was going to hold out, you know, where we stand with the club. Um, we definitely, I, I overly worry about making someone upset over there. So um, we got the invite and they said, request anyone you want. And I, number one for me, it was Joe Keeney because his story is insane as you're about to find out. And um, they said, yeah. So thanks to the club. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Yeah, it's it's really too good, and we can't thank City enough. Um, mm -hmm. They they've been more than accommodating in um, our requests, in allowing us to come and kind of see Joachini among other players, practice and get a feel for you know how they are on the pitch and how they're interacting and coalescing as a team. And I think for me, the the really exciting thing about Nico is at the time that we picked him, we were still wanting that American flavor to our team. You know, we had just, it was one of the first off season activities for city. We had signed a couple players. I think at that point, Jared Stroud had been made official. Uh, it was right at the beginning of the off season. And we were, we were starting to make all these moves. These international trades were gobbling up these spots to facilitate more international players. So everybody had been seeing the Klaus, the Berkeys, the Jensen's, the Ostrocks throughout the year waiting for, all right, are we going to sign an American? Who Who's coming to our team that we can kind of think think of as a domestic, as um, somebody maybe, you know, outlandishly that we could think about representing us on the national team? And so mm -hmm. all these thoughts are swirling in our minds at the time that, that the super draft or the expansion draft rather was. So I, I know personally I had no inkling on – Joe Keeney as as being the guy it's it at that point in the expansion draft we remember it's a crapshoot there are so many players available there's so many positions of need at the time we knew we had a striker we knew we had a defensive midfielder we knew we had a number 10 ish we knew we had some wingers but we were looking to fill in those players so knowing that and you'll hear it in the interview uh Lutz had said afterwards as soon as he picked him that once they saw he was available they knew he was their number one <laughs> And, and, and to me, that that just makes the, it all the more exciting, all the more necessary to talk to Nico. Yeah, and similar to us, like not sure we, whether we could pull getting Joe Keeney in an interview. Lutz sounded like he wasn't sure he'd be available at all, and so the surprise was something they jumped on and and uh, you know went for him and seemed very excited to get him as well, which makes sense. And, and we're going to talk more about that later for sure. And he brings the kind of experience that you want to. So one of the things I was excited to hear him talk about, and you'll hear it is his journey. And and that really is, like you said, at the heart of why we wanted to talk to him, is he has one of the most unique journeys of any player. And keeping in mind throughout this interview, he's 22 years old. He is he is extremely young in comparison to the players on our team. Our, our average player at this point in time is 24 years old, and and that's including Caden Glover, our 15-year-old. <laughs> so, so knowing the experience he brings from traveling from Kansas City to Italy to Bethesda, Maryland to France, uh, back over back to America with Orlando, hearing him describe that entire journey, and I want people to just really understand the maturity in his voice because at 22 years old, he does seem to me like he brings that level of maturity, and that's one of the things that really struck me, and I I'm, I was taken aback by it. So enjoy that when you're able to hear it. Yeah, almost like a 10 yard stare kind of thing. Like, yes. yeah, he's only 22, but the man has seen some stuff in the soccer world for sure. So, yeah. 
So going into it, framing it real quick, uh, we were able to talk to him right after practice. It was day three of practice. And it was the coldest day by far practice. I felt bad mm-hmm. for keeping Nico out there. He was a he was a hero for doing it. Uh, but it was it was by far the coldest day out there. The team had just got done doing some drills. Uh, a few of the media were were grabbing some players, and Nico spent some time with us. So great first day of practice. Uh, you've been in St. Louis for a little while. What do you think of the city? How are things going? Oh, first of all, I'm very excited to be here. Um, you know, I've been when as soon as they called me, I was. Uh, I was more than happy to join. Um, so, you know, it's a little cold, but we got accustomed to it. And um, yeah, I haven't really visited downtown much. I've mostly been trying to find a place to live, uh, which I did find. So once I'm installed, then maybe I'll venture out a little more. Awesome. Uh, when we talked to Lutz at the draft, he was saying he wasn't expecting you to be available. Um, were you in contact with Lutz or Bradley? Did you have any idea this was going to happen? And what's this been like from a player perspective? Uh, I had no idea. Um, I got a call. Uh, I was in I was in Paris with my mom, and uh, just got a call saying, you know, you're, you've been drafted to, to St. Louis. Congratulations! And uh, I was it was already the best news. It was the best news of the year for me. So, um, other than that, no, I had never spoken to this before, or Bradley. Um, but that first call was more than enough to be happy about. So uh, first pick in the expansion draft, you know, St. Louis is obviously excited for all of our picks, but there's a little expectation that comes with that. So what kind of player are you on, on the pitch that, that our fans can look forward to? I bring a lot of energy. Uh, my goal is to bring a lot of energy, uh, efficiency, and uh, an organization. Um, you know, I like, I like Flair as well, but Flair has its moments. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming here to, to help uh, bring history to the club and, uh, you know, enjoy it. We want, we're all here to enjoy the ball. So. Uh, the beautiful game is, is meant to be enjoyed, and, uh, and I'm here to help the team enjoy it. Fantastic. You had an, an amazing path here. So you started in Kansas City. St. Louis and Kansas City obviously have a unique rivalry, uh, unique history. So tell us a little bit about growing up in Kansas City. You know, were you on the Missouri, Kansas side? What was that like for you? Oh, I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, um, but I grew up in Overland Park, Kansas. So I spent eight years uh, on the Kansas side. You know, I, I was playing. I was really young, so you know, I was playing with my my elementary school, my preschool. Um, I joined the first little team um, called the Blue Valley, uh, the Orange Stars. Um, and uh, from then, you know, I just joined small clubs and I moved to Par- uh, to Italy when I was eight. And then uh, I spent about three and a half years there. Then I, moved, I came back to the States, but then I was in Maryland side, East Coast. And that's when I moved to Paris. But, you know, in Kansas City, you know, I was just playing for fun. I didn't really think about much except for, you know, dribbling through everyone and going to score goals. <laughs> Which is what we would look forward to from you. Um, so, you know, having an Italian dad, Jamaican mom, traveling so much, what what caused all the traveling? You know, what, what was that like for you moving from place to place, Italy, back to America? Well, it's it's a blessing, to be honest. Um, I know a lot of people don't get the, the, the chance to do so. So I had the family who was able to give me that opportunity. And... Um, you know, it's something as a young kid you don't really think about. You know, everywhere you go, you just go and you, you accept it. Um, I was also raised that way, so um, I'm, a, I'm a lot closer to my mom than I am with my dad. So she was someone who taught me the values of life and about moving around. And, you know, you're not always going to be happy where you are. You know, you have to dig deep and clench your teeth and get through it. It wasn't always easy, especially as a kid, but... You know, we, we learn a lot of things from everyone and everywhere we go, and I'm, I was happy to do so. Tell us a little bit about the differences between kind of the American academy systems that you played in, the French. Um, as a player, you know, what, what, what's the difference has been like, and did you have a preference for one side or the other? Um, well, in Europe, um, let's say France, because I spent most of my formation there, um, it's a lot about it's a lot about a mental game. It's a big mental game. Um, besides the players being technical, um, the players being very talented, um, it's all about, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, and I learned that. And I've been through several teams, several clubs, several formations where, you know, you've seen super kids come up and then they drop because it's, it's, all, it's a mental game. There's a lot of distractions or a lot of people coming to you for several reasons. Um, good and bad and it's whoever can stick to their plan stay humble and work um, is the one who are the ones who go the furthest so 
know, that's what I, I go by and I feel like in America it's getting to that, but it's not there yet. Um, you know, the young kids, the youth kids coming up from the academies to, as a professional player in Europe are, are humbled very quickly. Um, I haven't gotten the experience of seeing that here as yet, because I just got here. But, um, you know, hopefully with the young boys joining our group, um, I'll be able to give my opinion to them and uh, share what I think will help them um, overseas if they got the, the wonderful opportunity to do, to do so. Looking forward to that mentorship role? Yeah, yeah, I like I like sharing my experiences. I have, uh, even though I'm 22, I've, I've kind of been all over, so um, I, I know what I'm saying. And uh, I hope they listen to me, but that's up to them. <laughs> They'd be well served to do so. Um, so, you know, some of the French clubs you were at, so Paris FC, PSG, what are some differences you saw in those types of clubs? Um, so, because we, in St. Louis, we'd love to follow, you know, the European leagues. There's a lot of a lot of fans who are familiar with Europe and less so with MLS even in St. Louis. So, what, what's the perspective like in the Ligue 1 teams? Well, um, every team has a different philosophy. Uh, the ones I played for and played against, um, it's, it's all about energy. It's energy, but it's energy that's focalized on in the game, in, in, in game situations, in the sense that with the ball and without the ball, knowing what to do and when. Um, it's the being able to control your strong moments and be able to and know what to do on your weaker side, in your weaker moments when the other team has the ball. Um, and you know, in France, they do work a lot on when you don't have the ball, um, how to get it back as quickly as possible. And as you see here in training, we're doing a lot of counter pressing and mm -hmm. that's something that is gonna work in the game. Um, uh, and I don't say I think, because I, I know uh, it's very difficult as a team, playing against a team that does counter press um, all game, it, it is very, very difficult to, to counter that. And um, that's something that in Europe they work on a lot and that's, that's what we're doing here. So I, you know, you get a, a European feeling as well in, in training. A um, bunch of players coming from over there as well, so it's, it's high level, it's, it's enjoyable. So coming from France to America, what, what uh, was kind of the onus in coming to Orlando? And were you excited? Were you looking forward to it? Is that something you wanted to make uh, the jump in your career? Yes, I was very excited. Um, when I saw the opportunity, the sports opportunity, I was excited. Um, I had not thought about the MLS, uh, coming to the MLS prior to them. Um, but when they came, you know, I thought about my options and I said, you know, this could be a good opportunity. And so I took it, I made the choice. It didn't work out, but hey, that's part of the game. It's part of the business. So um, I ended up here and, you know, as I say, you know, God's path, everyone has their own, their own journey. So um, I'm here now and I'm, I'm happy to be here. One of the more exciting things that we noticed uh, in kind of looking up your history and, and how you came to be in St. Louis is your history with the U.S. national team. So what kind of ambitions do you have or what kind of uh, memories even do you have with the national team and what are your thoughts on, on that journey for you? Well, yeah, I have, I have eight caps in the national team, um, three goals. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always excited to be called up. It's always a, it's always a pleasure and an honor to be called up for, for your country. Um, I haven't been in a while, um, which I have thought about, but at the end of the day, it's about performing with your club. If you don't perform with your club, if you're not playing game in and game out, game out it's hard to be called up. Um, I know the circumstances, I know what it's about. Um, I'm fortunate to miss the World Cup qualifiers and the World Cup, but that's, that's part of it, there's another one. Um, but you know, honestly, I'm not really thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about doing as best as I can here, and then maybe opportunities will open up elsewhere, and, uh, and then and, um, the national team will uh, call me back. So we have, a, we have a lot of quality strikers on our team. We've got a lot of quality depth in a lot of positions. What are you looking forward to personally and professionally for yourself on the field? And, and how do you see yourself contributing with City this, this inaugural season? Oh, I see, a, I see a two forward combination of them. Um, I don't know what the coach has in mind exactly as yet, but um, I love two forwards. Uh, I'm a nine, I'm a nine, nine and a half. Uh, I like playing under the four. That's, that's my favorite position. That's where I think I'm most useful. Um, but of course, it's yeah. tough to coach and where he puts me, I will play. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, wherever they need help, I will be. Um, and uh, I'm here to, to, to create some chances, score goals, and, and I say, make history. You know, it's our first season. Let's, let's make it a, a beautiful one and, and then not doubt ourselves because we just joined. We have quality, we have talent, we have age, we have everything that we need to be able to be a, a competitive group and a winning group. So that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to. For any other reason than winning games. 
Well, it's freezing out here, so I won't keep you too long. But one other thing is, is there anything else you'd like to let the St. Louis fans know? Um, everybody is obviously excited. The Orlando fans we talked to are devastated about losing you. So the fans in St. Louis, anything you want to let them know about you or, or just your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm here for all fans. I love fans. Without fans, there is no game. So um, we want as many fans, pump up fans, the game as possible. Um, and you know, support us as much as you can, and we'll we'll do our best to to put smiles on every everyone's face. And um, you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to enjoy all together and create a, a family. Well, Nico, we thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, that was our interview with St. Louis City SC forward Nico Joachini, our first d- expansion draft pick. And Phil, I don't know about you, but um, I had alluded to it beforehand. And the thing that I walk away from is. The maturity level, you know, mm-hmm. through, throughout, uh, throughout, there was a calmness, there was a quietness, there was a directness and every single, every single response was intentional. It came with it, a level of experience and it came with it, a level of passion for the game. And that really struck me. Yeah. And in his story, you know, you asked about like him traveling around and and how he just mentioned how he's close to his mom and his mom's Jamaican and there's this calmness to him. And, you know, just like get this vibe that his mom, his mom did right by like raising him up to be a good guy. And because, um, you know, it's mentioned throughout that, you know, we're looking for guys that have good personalities and it just you get the I mean, it's only a 10 minute interview, but you get this vibe that he's a calm, cool, collected Um, ready to be a leader out there, which we've seen vocally on the field. Um, It's just like nothing but good vibes from from Nico so far. And that kind of goes with Lutz's whole comment about what type of player he wants on the team. He's always talking about the quality on the pitch and mattering just as much as the quality off the pitch. And hearing Nico describe uh, things like the mental game in France, needing to ignore the distractions and put the game first and focus and that tripping up a lot of people you know, that, that speaks to me that if, if he wasn't in conversations before the draft with Lutz and Bradley, then he was somehow on their radar. (laughs) You know, he mentioned that he didn't talk directly to them, but it was clear that whether or not the, they knew he was going to be available in the expansion draft, he was somebody that they had scouted, had experience and they knew the type of player on and off the field that they were taking. So that, that spoke to me a lot in how he's going to fit into not just the system, but the culture that Lutz is building here. Yeah. And surely there's some back channels, you know, the, if you look at the guys, um, the guy's history on transfer mark, you see, he's played for, uh, Paris FC, Montpellier, Khan. And so, you know, surely those coaches or players, you know, someone is connected to someone that was able to have a conversation there because yeah, he just fits right in. Absolutely. The, the, the model of the kind of player that, um, Lutz has been wanting to bring in seemingly. And the experience that he brings too. So not just going from Kansas city to Italy to, I think at that point it was Bethesda, Maryland, and then over to France to really start his club career. Um, there's the experience of, of hopping all over the place, but there's also the competition experience, you know, league Deux, league, Une, those are some really high quality leagues, league Une being a top five in the world, you know, you know, unequivocally. Mm-hmm. And, and knowing that he brings, you had said earlier, and you know, it's 28 games, uh, in league Une with Montpellier and he comes from, and I'm going to butcher the name, but you had it the other day, Ken, I think it was. <laughs> It's a debate. Ken, yeah. Con, Ken, who knows? Con, <laughs> so, you know, League Do, League uh, those are some of the some of the hallmark leagues that you want your players to come from. We're excited from all of our other international players to bring Bundesliga experience. Well, don't sleep on what Nico brings from France. And the the way he described playing in France and whether it was the teams he played for or against the culture saying it was a marathon, a very mental game. There were a lot of distractions, people coming at you in all different ways. And just the, the, the people who rose to the top and succeeded were those who could stick to their plan, stay humble and work. And, and, yeah. and it really, it really makes me feel like our, our younger players, like he said, in his mentoring role are going to benefit from that experience and his perspective really seems like uh, a, a wise old veteran. Yeah. And, and the cool thing is, like you said, Matt, I think, would you say 28 games and, and league on, and um, that's incredible. 473 minutes. I just looked it up. Um, and he performed very well for, for Khan in, in league. Deux. And 
Um, he's just his experience is amazing. And, you you know, a lot of people have been critical of St. Louis. We talked about the, the terrible article that had five words about St. Louis twice. Um, you look at, at Nico and sure, make fun of the designated team comment. But, you know, he's he's valued on transfer market at $1.2 million. Like that is not what our cap is seeing right now. And he's not the only player on a roster that is like that. Now we can't like depend on that, of course, but it is an argument to um, the fact that we have been putting down, putting together a very valuable team, no matter what the salary cap is, our team is very valuable on the world market as far as actual money is concerned. And so, you know, it, it's interesting to watch that versus what the cap is versus, you know, other teams and um, what they're paying for what they got basically. And so that's something I've been tracking and Nico's just a perfect example of, of one of those on our team. Spot on. And the the actual value, the actual money, uh, when you think of the global transfer market is a huge thing to remember, because just like we were taking advantage of free transfers last summer with our European players, Berkey uh, and, and you know Jensen, I think Ostrak was on a free. We took advantage of a free mechanism in MLS. So Joe Acchini had ingrained himself into the MLS ecosystem at the time. So he was signed uh, from con to orlando last july so he'd only been with orlando for a few months when we were able to kind of just pluck him away regardless of if orlando really wanted to let him go or not he was ours on a free transfer essentially so that that valuable of a player with that experience on a free transfer it doesn't happen a lot and so really hitting i think we really hit on that first pick with the expansion draft um and it, I, I think it means a lot to the depth of our team that we were able to get him on a free, whereas you're seeing, you know, whether or not we're splashing money elsewhere, we're making the best use of all of our available tools. Yeah, and, and he, he fits our system. I think we, we can talk about what he said about his positioning, but also if you read between the lines, it's really hard to not – get out of that interview that the Orlando thing didn't work out. Right. And yeah, no. well, maybe it wasn't long enough or maybe they read him wrong or maybe their system just didn't fit what he is. But, um, you know, we, Matt and I were talking offline about, um, where he would play. And, and, and even if he doesn't play where he wants to, I really truly think in this system, he's going to be useful everywhere just based on what we've seen from him in the French leagues. And even with the national team, the guy, um, can make, the wing position work, even if that's not his first choice. And it sounds like he's very willing as well, which is also important. And it, I think it is important to know where he came from in Orlando, because it, it's not that he didn't speak highly of Orlando. I think he, he was very quick to comment that it just didn't work out. No. And, and I do want to reiterate that in my opinion, I don't, it's not any fault of his own. It's more that he wasn't used properly in their system. He was behind some players that he might not you know, really deserve to be behind. But in that kind of where he refers to himself as a nine and nine and a half, he really likes the two striker formations that didn't play out a whole lot in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And when, when strikers were on the field, he was more or less their fourth option in, in their attacking player. So they had, um, Erkan Kara, their DP international striker. They had Benji Michael. Um, they had Facundo Torres who often played in that, that attacking role. And then they had, uh, Tesho Akindele. So where, where's room for Nico in where he wants to play, where he feels he's best suited in St. Louis. It's assumed that he's going to be competing against Klaus. We assumed that there'd be a, a four, two, three, one formation just because that's what we saw last year. And we did see a four, four, two sometimes last year. So it's definitely mm-hmm. not out of the realm of possibility, but to hear him describe that that's where he works best really kind of opens the eyes and, and starts to really get the imagination going about the kinds of formations uh, how we can fit Klaus and Nico on the pitch at the same time in that kind of striker role where they're not just the guy who's gobbling up the ball in the box, but they're facilitating chances. And Nico spoke directly to that. So you're starting to put all of these pieces together in how he can really make a difference here immediately where he was never really afforded that opportunity in Orlando. Yeah. And, and just to go back to like, you mentioned all the guys ahead of him. I'm so glad you had that ready, Matt. That was good stuff because I do remember, I mean, I've been a fan of Nico for a long time. And when he went to Orlando, I started watching Orlando games to try to catch him. And if I looked at the lineup, you know, it was always like Akindele or Benji Michelle. And 
I was frustrated because I was like, surely he's beating these two guys out. And and I truly think it was like a system thing or a favorites thing or, you know, Akindeli is an older veteran. So maybe they trusted him in MLS to like, you know, be ready and know what to do when they're desperate for a goal at the end of a game because Akindeli wasn't even a starter. So, um, you know, who knows what the story was there. But again, like our system dictates, I really think he's going to get a chance whether they want to or not, we are going to need minutes from Nico in this system. And I truly think it won't matter who's ahead of him or who's behind him. Um, the guy's going to get his minutes. And, 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 and the cool thing about what you just said, Matt, is um, that MLS Next Pro, yeah, Hackworth was the coach, but Lutz is not – I think Lutz has set up some stringent boundaries in certain ways as a sporting director, but what he has never done is we're going to play this formation. That's never right. been a thing. It's very flexible. It works in multiple formations. Like you said, we saw the four, four, two. So Nika would love that, but we can also use him like at sometimes Norwich city he uses Josh Sargent as a left winger, but yes, mm-hmm. he's at most of the time um, folding in and being almost a second striker in a, a lot of the time. So that's something we can do. There's a million other options. That's just, I wanted to fit in my two nerdy ideas while we were talking. About oh, it. And, and we could go on and on about that. Yeah. We could talk about how we were watching city two games and numerous times debating what formation they were in because they would mm-hmm. shift so high on the left side, for instance, to where it looked like Pedro or Ezra were ending up as a midfielder and we had a back three, that kind of shifting plays exactly to your ideology there, where if you start Nico out on the wing, quote unquote, he'll end up in the box right next to Klaus. 90% mm-hmm. of the time they'll, they'll have that more or less two striker role as our, as our uh, formation kind of shifts and angles. So knowing that he's in the spot that he's in with St. Louis, where he's essentially pushing Klaus, he's vying for time. He's competing against our DP striker. Whereas in Orlando, he was, he was behind Benji Michel. He was behind Fugundo Torres and Akindele and Cara. That was not a good situation for him. And it's, it's, pretty obvious from the fan reaction that I was looking at that they never really, they didn't really get to see him. He was often an 80th minute sub. He was often just the depth in the midfield to come off the bench. He he had very few legitimate opportunities. So we talked about how this is a great move for St. Louis. You can't help, but know that it's a great move for Nico as well. Mm-hmm. And, and this is the opportunity I think he'll have to, and getting way ahead of ourselves, shine for the national team potentially in the future, which he he alluded to. And really quick on the national team, I thought it was impressive and a little bit telling that he was able to so quickly um, spout out his number of caps and mm-hmm. goals with the national team. It clearly means a lot to him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think St. Louis, I'm sure when he came here, there's, there's good side to coming to MLS. If you want to break into the national team, because this January camp coming up, you don't have to be like an incredible world beater to make January camp. All you got to be is the best in MLS and, you know, maybe even the top three to five in your position in MLS. So um, it's not a bad move to get some looks with the national team, endear yourself to the national team coach, and then it could call up and maybe even also, Right before we got on, I was seeing Fagundo Torres is getting looked at by Arsenal right now. I mean, yeah. MLS is still coming up. It's not good enough yet. But the fact that that's a thing um, means a lot. And the fact that Lutz is connected to a lot of clubs with, you know, Aaron Hurd. And, uh, you know, it, it's not just a one-way street. We're not just going to be pulling players from Europe. We're going to be trying to send them as well. It's something that all MLS clubs are looking at. And so mm-hmm. Joe Keeney, for real, when he came in, I thought national team first. And then second, that's why we asked that question. It's hard in 10 minutes to ask a really precise question, but I was really hoping, yes, I want national team. Yes, I'd love to go back to Europe. Who knows? He might be there and maybe we'll get a chance to ask that question, but that's kind of where we were trying to go there. And there's really no reason why we shouldn't have that kind of not not necessarily expectation, but ambition for him. Yeah. He's, again, reiterating, 22 years old. We've talked nerdy so many times in the past few weeks and months about using U22, young DP slots. Think about this as that kind of a player, where if it weren't for the mechanism that we got him in the expansion draft, we would have had to pay from, from, uh, from, Kane, or from Khan the million-dollar transfer fees. You know, he, he would have cost a lot of money to get him from that way. So the fact that he had already come to MLS, the fact that he was made, he was exposed in the, in the expansion draft, 
all played in our favor, but you can also think of him as that type of player that we want to see Lute sign and take advantage of those mechanisms. He's the type of player who's young enough. He can play with us until the end of his contract, perhaps, maybe get an extension and then be sold on or be sold on before that. There, there are limitless opportunities that exist with his experience, his age, his talent, and it's exciting that we get to take advantage of all of that. And just circling back real quick to the, the type of person that he came off as in that interview, just remembering the soft-spoken nature, the desire to be a mentor at the age of 22. Mm-hmm. You don't find that often. This guy has the potential to be a really quality leader as well as pushing uh, Klaus to be everything that he should be up front and, and potentially fighting for that kind of a spot. So when you're when you're thinking about who you should be you know watching out for, I can't help but champion number 11. Yeah. Hopes and dreams for Nico, for sure. On this podcast, um, we're trying to, uh, you know, make, make this reality for sure. And, and, and just one last time, I, I know Matt has tweeted it. I know I mentioned it earlier, but I really want to emphasize that you look at the leaders on the field so far in, in preseason, just one week. And it's very clear that Nico is the one, like he's out there yelling and screaming and, and yeah. getting everybody like correcting everybody, pushing everybody to do better. Um, and to pay attention, you know, like he's the first one to be like, turn around, turn around, let's go, let's go. And ready to press again after the ball, you know, maybe went out of bounds or something like that. So that's really cool to see. And, um, yeah, I think he's going to be a leader. I think, um, we're all very excited about him. Yeah. It, when he, when he noticed that there's a little bit of European feeling in the training that St. Louis has, <laughs> it's a very high level. You, you could see and hear him just feel at home in this kind of a training. And you hope that that translates well on the field as well. And lastly, um, you know, he, he almost liked the fact that, you know, kids get humbled in these senior teams in Europe. And he's like, almost, almost like he's like, he's ready for that to happen in, in St. Louis. And that's a good thing too. I mean, humbling kids and showing them that it's not easy to get up there and showing them that there's a level that they got to get to. There's a lifestyle that you got to get to that even Berkey and Klaus have mentioned about, uh, American clubs, even so far in St. Louis. So, you know, that like, the U.S. MLS clubs have a ways to go, and guys like Nico and Klaus and Berkey are the kind of guys that are going to make it better. Not, you know, not just American coaches. Coaches can't just do it. You got to have those leaders. Well said. Anything else, Phil? No, man, I'm good. That was a lot of fun. All really right, good I interview had... too, Matt. You did a great right, job. That was your first go, and you were you were a natural. <laughs> first ever player interview. That was exciting, and I'm glad it was with uh, Nico Jokini. So. We'll wrap it up here on this flyover focus, uh, focusing on Nico Giochini. And we want to thank Nico, first of all, for taking the time to talk to us. Thank St. Louis City for the opportunity. And we hope to bring some more players to you in the future. 